So you want to learn to play counter push. What's counter push? You just clicked on this video by accident? No matter. I will teach you how to absolutely demolish 10 to 13 year old children every Sunday on the Idiot Games Minecraft server. Let's first start with, what is Counter Push? Counter Push is a 5v5 class-based first-person game coded entirely out of command blocks by a friend of mine, Yeti Gamer, in Minecraft. The game gets played regularly with full teams every Sunday when he streams. The classes consist of a brawler, sniper, tank support, and tracer, which I will get to later in the video. Now, you may be asking, who am I to tell you how to play? Well, if you don't know me, you're not a regular to the server right now. See, I'm the co-creator of two games on the Eddie Games server. Counterpush wise, I'm the team leader and trickster for the current best team, winning 4-1 to tournament-wise against the current second best team. Added two teams. I also help design maps such as Library and Aztec, and Design Laboratory, along with Kelton, the lead builder of Counterpush maps and designer of Aztec. Finally, I, along with Kelton, designed all the custom textures for the Counterpush texture pack, and also named every kit. I also gave all the items funny lures. Now that you know who I am, let's quickly cover all the game modes. There are two minecart rings in the middle of the map. Your objective is to push your minecart and complete at least 20 rotations and win by 6 rotations. One game of this mode is played best of 3 rounds with 3 variations of the map. I don't want to set the world on fire Both teams have a minecart to push. The winning team is the one who pushes the cart to the end of the map. It's like Paleo Race from TF2. Due to being a generally terrible game mode and nightmare to design maps for, it's not really played anymore. Because only one more point is needed, and that will be Groink taking the map 1000 to 0. The first time that's ever happened before, actually. I don't think that's ever happened. The map is symmetrical and has a minecart track from one spawn to the other. To win, you push the minecart to the enemy's side and keep it there. The longer the cart stays on their side, the more points you get. The speed at which you receive points correlates to the distance at which the cart has been pushed into their side. This is the attack defend game mode with minecarts. One team pushes the cart, and the other tries to stop them. After time is up or minecart makes it all the way, teams swap and see who pushed better. If both teams push it all the way, the remaining time is used in overtime. This is an attack defend game mode, but control points instead of payload. Taking a point is done by pushing a card 5 rotations around a ring. Once a point is captured, you move on to the next and last point. Before we get into the classes, I have to tell you that even with extensive knowledge of how every character in the game plays, you still have to have basic macro knowledge of Minecraft PvP. No, not that kind of macro. This kind. Since we are playing in the latest version, not the old brainless spam clicking version, you have to understand attack speed. All weapons have a damage and attack speed. Your main weapons are swords that attack fast and axes that attack slow, but do much more damage than swords. Since you are playing against actual humans, burst damage is going to be better than damage per second as normal people won't let themselves get comboed. Another extremely important thing to know about is critical hits. In Minecraft, the only way to get crits is to have downward momentum. The easiest way of pulling this off is to jump and strike as we're falling after the apex of your jump. Criticals do 1.5 times damage, and most weapons will be ready to attack by the time you hit the ground, making it the most effective way of killing people. However, you cannot hit crits while you are sprinting. If you want to get knockback, you have to be running. One last thing. In counter push, all classes have the same armor value, 11. Due to armor's damage protection and Minecraft being quite complicated, when referring to damage throughout this video, I will be referring to base damage. One heart is two health. Here is a table how much damage you will actually do. Now you are ready to learn the complex ways of the counter push classes. All classes currently have six kits, each have their own abilities and their own finals. A final is charged up throughout the round and can be used to change the tide of a game. Please keep in mind that patches roll out fairly often and some specific parts of this tutorial may be outdated, which is why I will try to avoid specific numbers where I can. For future reference, a few or a couple seconds refers to 2 to 5 seconds, and a long cooldown refers to 10 to 15 seconds. With that in mind, let's get into the kits.
Brawler is the best starter class, as the only requirements to play it are a single key on your keyboard, at least one button on your mouse, and a minimum of three brain cells. Your one and only objective as Brawler is to kill the rule. But there's no shame in playing an easy class. I mean, if you think you have it easy, just remember people play Winston in Overwatch. You have a steel sword and a one-time use fire sword. The first thing you're always going to want to do is put your main sword in your own hand, because hitting someone with fire first will basically blind them and let you get some free hits with the main sword. The final is several seconds of being able to use the flame sword as much as you want. You have two hammers. The master hand, I mean hammer, which is your main weapon. This weapon has been modified to deal decent damage at a slightly faster attack speed than swords. The second weapon, the crazy ha hammer, has infinite attack speed and deals a little less damage than master hammer. For obvious reasons, holding it slows down your movement speed. You also get a self amplify which allows you to deal one more damage per hit for a few seconds. The final is Ultra Hammer, which deals over double the damage as Master Hammer and has the same attack speed as Crazy Hammer, while also increasing your movement speed. A free team wipe money back guarantee. You have a sword and a trident. While holding your trident, you will get a little water below you, which will allow you to launch yourself with a trident. Hitting someone with the trident will also perform an area of effect attack. Your trident also does decent knockback. Ah! The final is a powerful lightning strike, but watch out as it can hit your teammates as well. <coughs> Pro tip, if your teammate is on fire, spawn some water on them. You have a sword and can activate a single use high damage sword for a few seconds, which after a hit or time is up, will force you to use a weak sword for a few seconds. Once getting your normal sword back, you must wait a couple more seconds before being able to use your strong sword again. The final gives you a 3 hit strong sword that lasts for a couple seconds or until you run out of hits. Make sure you hit crits with it or you will be wasting the hit. This kit is absolute dog sh**, and by dog sh**, I mean wolf sh**. You have a slow charging mana system that allows you to redeem the mana for up to 3 wolf companions, or heal your current ones. You get mana faster by hitting people. Thing is, wolves suck. Yeah, I said it. They do minimal damage, move slow, and are super easy to kill. The only use for these companions is to get in the way of hits. And to top it all off, your weapon is pretty weak. The final is 5 extra wolves. Maybe they'll collectively do a whopping 2 more damage. What the dog doing? This kit has the best movement in the game. You can right click to throw out a shadow which, when you let go, will lock in place. You can teleport to that shadow by right clicking again. If you drop your main weapon, you will perform an AoE attack around you, and your shadow will copy it if it is up. Your shadow, however, can be killed. Your ability allows you to spawn in 3 1 HP baby zombies. Your final slows you in place and performs a wave of AoE attacks around you. This sword is great and all, but I keep dying from getting so up close to people. No worries, my untalented little friend, for there's another class. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh my f***ing god! What's a game without a sniper? I guess there's something just so appealing about being able to hit someone from really far away and doing incredible amounts of damage. The thing is about snipers is that in most first person shooters, everyone has some sort of range and you can always be out sniped by someone with more skill than you. What? In counter push, everyone except the sniper uses melee, so you should abuse range to your advantage because you know damn well there's nothing those tiny swords can do about it. All arrows in this game have zero gravity, so don't worry about compensating for fall off. Lastly, one thing all snipers share in common is lower movement speed. This is done to balance the class. Otherwise... As 
most first kits go, this is your most standard kit and the closest you'll get to an actual sniper. While holding your bow, you are slowed down until you shoot or swap slots. A fully charged shot of this bow will do a whopping 18 damage. In Minecraft, all bows have a 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit when fully charged. A critical hit with this bow can almost one-shot a full health opponent. The final lets you spam the bow and has punch. It's not good. This is your go-to kit if you're good with a regular bow. You have 18 regular arrows and 2 sonar arrows. Sonar arrows reveal enemies near where the arrow landed. You can hold the arrow you wish to use, and at any point you can drop one of your arrows to reload and get all your arrows back, which takes a couple seconds. The final gives your team wall hacks. You have two loyalty three tridents. Range trident hits do eight damage. Ah! For obvious reasons, the melee does no damage. Your ability gives you much higher trident loyalty for a limited time. Your final spawns three drowns, one of which throws tridents. Easy to learn and basic kit. You get three guns. Crossbows do pretty high damage. Your magnet device pulls enemies to the enemy you hit with it and has Bro, a decent you what. cooldown. Your main gun is actually a normal crossbow which you have to charge up yourself but has no cooldown. The charge goes away if you switch slots. Your hazardous waste launcher is a poison 3 crossbow that yeah, has poison for a couple seconds. It has a decently long cooldown. The final launches a deadly cloud that will deal fatal damage if it touches an enemy and it goes through walls. Hey, that's pretty good. Your main weapon is a multi-shot bow. While having an unloaded bow, your ammo slowly regenerates, capping at 15 shots. Keep in mind that since your bow is multi-shot, each shot uses 3 ammo. You can also use the blow dart to freeze an enemy in place. This lasts for a short duration or until they take damage, so make that hit count. Your final is 3 shots with their arrows. Your only weapon with this kit is a rocket launcher. You shoot fairly slow projectiles that do high burst damage and also splash damage, and you can spam the projectile pretty well. If you hold crouch, you can slowly levitate in the air, or rocket jump, which hurts you. Wow! Imagine that, the one class with the range having mobility. Your final raises enemies in a radius where you're looking into the air, and drops them to deal very high burst damage. Sniper has too little health. I'm so sick of dying. Tired of dying? Should have said so. Every counter push class has their strengths and weaknesses, whether it being damage, defense, movement, or support. What's cool about Tank is that it literally has no weaknesses, and possesses all the aforementioned listed strengths. It gets an axe, which does more damage than swords. Unlike most tanks, it has no movement penalty, it has the most defense, as it should, and also has support abilities to buff its team. Some tanks even get a shield. No worries, thanks to a special someone. Their damage has recently been nerfed. get a battle axe and a shield. Bruh. Dropping your axe while looking at an ally will give him temporary protection, knockback resistance, and very strong thorns. Your final does the same, but for all teammates and yourself. For 12 seconds. Your weapons are a normal hammer and a knockback hammer with a cooldown. In your offhand, you can throw a bubble barrier down which blocks projectiles and gives resistance to nearby enemies. However, it does not block tridents. You can recall the bubble barrier if you wish to remove it. The final allows your current bubble barrier to give nearby teammates strength. This tank's main weapon is the only tank whose main weapon cannot disable shields. However, it deals knockback. Sounds familiar. You also have a speed potion which you can use on yourself and teammates. 
Imagine that, a tank that moves fast. The second slot summons a horse which can be used by any player, so be careful. The final gives you more knockback. Sounds familiar. Pro tip, give your support the horse so they can go around healing and are less often to get hit. Your main weapon is a battle axe. If you aim in the general direction of an enemy and drop the axe, this will disrupt them, essentially rendering them useless for a short period of time. You can also use your second slot to give resistance to nearby teammates for 8 seconds. If you thought this kit couldn't get any better, <laughs> you, it wrong. you also get a shield. So not only can you block every hit, but you can also make enemies' melee attacks do no damage. Your final disrupts all nearby enemies, bringing them all useless for a short time, enough time to kill them all. You have a staff and a potion. If you drop your axe while looking at a teammate, they will be given a short period of speed, strength, and resistance. And nerf one of them. Oh, uh, <laughs> they talk about wow. my one depths. <laughs> <laughs> I told you! I didn't even I curse him! I didn't even curse him! You can restart the timer by reapplying it. Constantly. You can also make an enemy take more damage by applying curse on them with a right click. Your potion makes a field that will give teammates faster attack speed whilst inside it. Your final is a throwable that, where thrown, will pull in nearby enemies and trap them there for a few seconds. Literally free guaranteed kills. And don't even get me started on the combined finals with this. This kit's main weapon is an axe. In your offhand, you have a snowflake which can be thrown. To activate it, either throw another one while it's still near, or let it hit a surface. Nearby enemies will be pulled into the flake's location of activation. Right-clicking your second slot grants you and any questionably close teammates invincibility for a few seconds. During this short duration, you cannot attack or use any abilities. If you drop your axe, you shoot out a little stream which if you can keep connected to an enemy for a small time, they are frozen for a short duration. Using this while you are protected will cancel the protection. Finally, your final spawns a high health polar bear to attack for you. To throw a potion so it's not a drop. Okay. It's like mass debuff. Get in the water! Yes! I, I don't like you. <laughs> what if I want to help my teammates, but I suck at PvP? I get skills so fast. Oh, it's an infinite! It's Get hit by the zombie, get hit by the zombie, let yourself get hit by the zombie a couple times. What's this? We're about to farm, okay. Oh my god, dude, my first set's going. <gasps> I just went up the. What? You guys get a single, single half rotation. Oh! Yo, no, bring him back, bring him in what? here, bring him in here. Your teammates hate you. Are you bad at PvP? If so, support is the class for you. Support's entire playstyle revolves around devoting your life to keeping your teammates alive. You are the backbone of the team. Because of this, you are the prime target for the enemy, so it's not just a relaxing time. All supports have a relatively weak sword and natural regeneration. This kit has a sort of mana system. For simplicity, we will call it mana. You start out with 3 mana and get 1 mana per 4 seconds, maxing out at 3 mana. You can drop your main weapon to use 1 mana for 3 idea. seconds of speed to yourself really and nearby teammates. Mostly, you will be using mana to throw potions. They can be used on yourself and teammates and instantly heal 2 hearts. Teammates who are near you will get slow regeneration. Your final is 6 seconds of rapid fast regeneration to nearby teammates. You are given 2 potions. A potion that provides instant 4 health to teammates but cannot be used on yourself and the double potion, which is a fairly long cooldown splash potion that can be used on yourself or teammates to heal an instant okay. health, or damage teammates and make them unable to be healed for a few seconds. The final is 15 seconds of you and your teammates getting extra health. Your potion gives regeneration and temporary two extra hearts to teammates. Dropping your sword or using your second slot provides a temporary regeneration to all teammates in a 10 block radius. That regeneration is half for yourself. The final is 10 seconds of complete, uncounterable invincibility and 4 absorption hearts to all teammates.
right clicking will turn your beam into your team color, which means it is on. While it is on, it heals teammates and damages enemies. The healing shower gives you mana and can either be sent forwards or placed stationary, and it heals yourself and allies. Your final provides strength, speed, resistance, and instant health to a single team for 8 seconds. You are given a single target healing hand and a melee weapon. While you are attached to an ally, you lose your primary weapon, but you can drop the first slot to switch between healing and damage boost. Dropping the second slot will give absorption hearts to the teammate you are healing for 10 seconds. If you are in trouble, you can crouch to fly towards a teammate you are looking at. The final fully heals all your teammates and denies healing to enemies for 7 seconds. Given a bow with healing arrows and an instant shot anti heal Why are you bow. bullying me? Your arrows do high burst healing to teammates and little damage to enemies. Your final shoots a cloud that heals teammates and gives them damage and speed boost when within the range of the cloud. Support is cool and all, but I want to be able to do damage while I help my team. Then go play tank. But if you want to play like annoying little c It could be you! It could be me! It could even be. Obvious. He's the red spy. And finally, we have the trickster, my personal favorite class. As a trickster, you want to leave behind all morals, as your entire playstyle is going to be based around being an annoying little prick. All tricksters are given a medium damage knife and a slightly faster movement speed. Is there anywhere on the map that kills you? If so, this kid is going to be a roller coaster of fun to play as, but not against. You have a knockback scythe with a 5 second cooldown which will launch opponents who you hit with it. You can use a potion to go invisible at Mach 7, which lasts forever until you hit or get hit. Your soul analyzer can be dropped near enemies to show their health and final meter to the whole team as well as give them temporary glowing. If you thought that was it, you're wrong. You can also set a rollback point to wherever you want and teleport to it at any time with no cooldown. This is useful because you have barely any health and will get one shot a lot. Looking directly up will kill your rollback and looking directly down will remove your invisibility. The final is a 5 hit extra knockback hoe that lasts 10 seconds. Pro tip, hitting while running deals extra knockback. This trickster kit has a grenade which applies blindness, slowness, and weakness to enemies for 2 seconds and places a large smoke effect which is thicker to enemies. You can also drop the hot wire to hack up to 2 health packs for a whole minute each. Hacked health packs can only be used by your color. And have a lower cooldown as well as reward you with final meter when used. Your final is a throw ball that applies glowing, slowness, blindness, wither, and weakness to the enemies it hits for a decent while. This kit is a trap which freezes an enemy in place. It can be placed anywhere and if stepped on by an enemy will trap all enemies within a 2 block radius, usually being just the one person who stepped on it. You can also set a 2 way teleporter that you or your team can use but can be destroyed. The final is a throwable poison 3 splash potion. You have a hook which can be used to bring people towards you, which can also be used to get environment. <sighs> well, this did not age well. So, the new Trickster D is quite the interesting kit. The hook, or lasso now, has been finally buffed to be consistent as a targeting system rather than a hook. His new abilities are dropping his main weapon, which slows enemies and yourself in a radius, making it pretty easy to get a free kill by pulling someone and basically freezing them for your team to have. The other ability is also... interesting. So, it's a potion that, where dropped, makes a field that affects yourself and teammates and gives 60% resistance while inside it. That's much, MUCH less damage taken. The new final slows enemy attack speed. This kit is mostly based around damage, as it can throw a remote bomb that deals decent damage, which will also temporarily blind enemies hit by it. It can be detonated whenever, so it can be used as a trap. Be careful though, as you can still hit yourself with it. You can also spawn in a miner buddy, which deals fairly good damage, but his AI isn't very good. The miner comes into the spawn line when everyone is bunched up together. 
The final is a charged creeper with terrible AI because creepers target a random person and often won't explode. Also, it can blow up your teammates. You have three dashes which can be used by right clicking with your sword. Woo! Dropping your sword near an enemy will place a bomb on them which damages enemies and yourself. Crouching will allow you to leap into the air. Yahoo! Your final completely freezes enemies in a radius. Chaos control! Pro tip, if you jump right after a dash, you can gain a lot of distance and hop around like a speed demon. Hopefully, now that you've learned all the kits, you can get the practicing and learning and refining mechanical skills. Whether you're a noob, a seasoned PvPer, or a cheater, you now know how to play Counter Push. Just remember that just watching a tutorial video won't make you good. Except this one. You're now a god. See ya.